Hey there, I'm Jessica, and this is Bookshelf to Big Screen. Today, I'm talking about the book, The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith, and the 2015 movie adaptation titled Carol. Fair warning, I'll be talking about specific details in the book and movie, so there will be spoilers. I want to give a little background on the book and the author before we get into it. The book was first published in 1952 under the pseudonym Claire Morgan. Highsmith had written Strangers on a Train already and wanted to avoid being known for writing lesbian books. The book is not exactly a true story, but it was based on Highsmith's personal experiences. It wasn't until 1990 that Highsmith finally agreed to a new edition without the pseudonym. A new edition was also published as Carol in 2015 as a tie-in to the movie. Okay, so the story is about Therese Bellavet. She's 19, living alone in New York. When the story begins, she's working the toy counter in a department store, and she basically experiences love at first sight when she sees Mrs. Carol Aird, a middle-aged divorcee. So let's talk about what's different. In the book, Therese is only working at the department store for the holiday season. Her real passion is set designing, and she spends a lot of time working on her sets and trying to network and break into the industry. She's dating Richard, who's pursuing painting, but later ends up working for his dad. They often spend time with Phil, who's pursuing acting, and Danny, who is a physicist. Phil gets Therese her first real job designing the set for a small play. In the movie, Therese is a photographer. Phil works at a movie theater and Danny works for the New York Times. He's the one who later gets Therese a job at the Times. There's no real talk about what Richard does, but he does at one point say that he got a better job for her. I kind of wish they would have kept these details from the book. As a former theater geek myself, I love the fact that Therese was pursuing a career in set designing. Being involved with the theater is just so New York, and I think it also made for a better ending, but we'll come back to that. When they first meet, Therese is working at the doll counter and Carol is shopping for her daughter's Christmas present. In the book, their eyes meet at the same instant. Therese is so captivated, she ignores another customer asking her a question. As they continue to look at each other, Carol walks over to her counter and asks to see something from the display. Therese goes back and gets the key for the display case and ends up selling Carol a display, both of which she was not allowed to do. I think this is an important detail. Therese is pretty quiet and mindful, but this shows her immediate infatuation with Carol and her willingness to do anything for her. After taking the delivery order, Therese goes after Carol to give her the delivery claim slip. Carol comes back to her counter and buys the doll. She leaves the claim slip on the counter again and Therese reminds her about it. Carol says, it doesn't matter, she always gets her things anyway. I think this is important too. It's an indication of how determined Carol can be and how she isn't bothered by conventions imposed on her by others. Carol also never mentions her daughter during this encounter. In the movie, Therese sees Carol first and it takes a few moments before Carol appears at her counter. Carol immediately mentions her daughter, Rindy, and even shows Therese a photo of her. Carol is less matter of fact and asks for a recommendation on what to get for Rindy. Therese is less timid and more talkative and recommends getting a train. While on the surface, this interaction is mostly the same, I feel like these characters are completely different than the ones in the book, which is something that made me prefer the book. In the book, the same afternoon she meets Carol, Therese buys a card to send to her. She contemplates writing, you are magnificent, or I love you, but settles on special salutations from Frankenberg's which was the name of the department store. And she added her employee number as the signature. Carol calls her the next day to thank her for the card and invites her to lunch. In the movie, Carol leaves her gloves on the counter at the department store. 
Therese ends up taking them home and late that night decides to mail them to Carol. Carol still calls to invite her to lunch. During her lunch, Carol invites Therese out to visit her at her home in New Jersey. In the book, Therese sees a photo of Carol with Rindy, and this is the first time they talk about her daughter. They awkwardly hang around the house, and then Carol suggests that Therese should take a nap. She makes her come upstairs and lay down, and then it gets kind of weird. Therese drinks some hot milk and gets drowsy. She cries and tells Carol her whole life story. Then Carol gets a call from her husband, Harge, saying he's coming over. Carol is annoyed by this, but they go downstairs just as Harge comes in. Harge is polite to Therese. He collects some things for Rindy, and then he asks Carol if Therese is a friend of Abby's. We'll talk about Abby in a minute. Carol tells him, no, she's a friend of hers. Harge also mentions that he's going by another woman's house, which is an indication that he's already dating someone else. In the movie, we get some background on Carol and Harge's relationship before Therese goes to the house. Harge doesn't want to get divorced. He's clearly annoyed by Carol spending any time with Abby. And at one point, Carol says to him, Abby and I were over long before you and I were over telling us that she's already had an affair with a woman. When Therese goes to Carol's house, they pick up a Christmas tree and Carol decorates it with Rindy while Therese looks on. Therese plays the piano while Carol wraps presents and Carol looks panicked when Hard shows up unannounced, wanting to pick up Rindy to take her out of town for Christmas. In the middle of their argument, Harge asks Therese how she knows Carol. Carol tells him how she returned her gloves, but he's still upset. After Carol puts Rindy in the car, Harge drunkenly pleads with Carol to go with them, but she refuses. Therese goes home on the train, and Carol calls her that night to apologize and ask if she can see her again. In the book, Therese sees Carol again on Christmas Eve. This is when they pick up the Christmas tree and they decorate it together. Therese stays the night at Carol's house, and in the morning, she meets Carol's best friend, Abby. She is very jealous of Abby. Carol talks with Abby about the divorce, and we learn that Harge won the first round and will have Rindy for the next three months. In the movie, the story is not just told from Therese's perspective, so we see Carol meet with her lawyer before Christmas. He tells her that Harge asked for an injunction to keep Carol from seeing Rindy. He's asked for sole custody and is petitioning the judge to consider a morality clause. Her lawyer says the hearing may not be until March, and he advises Carol to avoid trying to see Rindy before then. Since Carol can't see Rindy, she decides to take a trip for a while and drive west. She invites Therese to go with her. In the book, they spend a few weeks together driving all the way to Colorado Springs. They had also spent a lot of time together before the trip. While they're on the trip, they share a room the entire time, but it's not until they get to a town in Iowa called Waterloo that anything romantic happens. Therese tells Carol that she loves her, and Carol says the same, and then kisses Therese. This is the first time they sleep together. After they're together for the first time, Therese insists that Carol tell her about her affair with Abby. Carol tells her it happened the previous winter. She and Abby had been friends since they were four, and that she knew that when they were young, Abby had a crush on her. But it wasn't until they opened a furniture shop together that she started to become attracted to Abby. Then one night the previous winter, the roads were snowed in and they had to stay at Abby's house and her mother had insisted that they stayed together in Abby's room. She said it lasted only about two months and says something about it being different when you have a husband and a child. In the movie, they have separate rooms for the first part of the trip until Therese suggests getting the presidential suite in one hotel if the rate is better. In Waterloo, Carol makes the first move, untying her robe and then kissing Therese. Then there's a passionate three-minute love scene. 
In the morning, Carol gets a telegram and goes into a rage. She grabs her gun and bursts into the neighboring hotel room. She finds the detective hard hired to follow her and sees that he's been recording them through the wall. She tries to get the tapes from him, but he says they've already been sent out. And Carol tries to shoot his equipment, but the gun wasn't loaded. In the book, Carol gets a telegram in Salt Lake City and calls Abby and gets some upsetting news, but she wouldn't tell Therese about it. They head to Denver, and on the road, Carol finally tells Therese that Abby found out that Harge hired a detective to follow them since Chicago. Then Therese tells her about a man she believed to have seen twice, once in Waterloo and again just the night before. Carol thinks for a minute about heading back east, but stubbornly decides to continue their trip together. They spend a few more days together in Colorado, but when they finally see the detective again, Carol wants to leave. They see the detective following them, and Carol pulls off the road to talk to him. She considers pulling her gun, but she decides against it. She asks for everything he has on her, but he tells her that he's already mailed it off and he's only got a few notes. She offers to pay him and he ends up selling her a couple of recordings that he still had for $500. He advises her to go back to New York and leaves. In the movie, Carol leaves the day after the confrontation with the detective. Abby is in the room when Therese wakes up and tells her that she's there to drive her home. Abby is the one who tells Therese about her past with Carol. She says they were friends since they were 10 and their affair was around five years ago, but doesn't say exactly how long it lasted. She gives Therese a letter from Carol. Carol says that they must have no further contact, but not much else, and Abby takes her back to New York. In the book, Carol tells Therese that she will continue their trip but after talking to her lawyer, she says she needs to go back for a week or so. Carol flies back to New York and Therese drives back to Sioux Falls to wait for Carol. After a few days, Carol writes and tells her that it's over. She never even went to court because during a meeting between all of them, Harge's lawyers presented all they had, including the recordings from their stay in Waterloo. In order to be able to see Rindy, she had to promise not to see Therese anymore or have any other relationships like that. Carol sends Therese money to fly home and have the car driven back, but Therese decides to drive back herself. She is selfishly upset that Carol chose Rindy over her. She gets a job as a clerk for two weeks before heading back, and during this time, Abby calls her. Abby is upset that she has not come back or tried to find out how Carol is doing. While she's in Sioux Falls, Danny comes out to see Therese. Early in the book, she and Danny spend a bit of time together and Therese kind of likes him. One day, while they're having lunch at his apartment, he kisses her. She doesn't reciprocate, but she doesn't seem to mind either. In Sioux Falls, he tells her that he got a job in California and that he likes her. He says he understands how she feels about Carol and asks her to write to him in a few weeks after she's had some time to grieve her breakup. In the movie, Danny also kissed her early on, but nothing comes of it. When Therese gets back to New York, Danny gets her a job at the New York Times. About a month has passed and we see a meeting between Carol and Harge and all the lawyers. Carol's lawyer is fighting for Carol to have shared custody of Rindy. However, Carol decides to give full custody to Harge, but she wants to have visitation rights. She says that going to court will get ugly and she does not want that for Rindy. In the book, when Therese finally returns to New York, she begins networking again and gets a lead on a job. She calls Abby to make arrangements for returning Carol's car, but Abby encourages her to call Carol. She calls Carol and arranges to meet to give her the car. Carol tells Therese that she's lost completely with Harge and she may only be able to see Rindy a couple of times a year. She said that she refused to abide by a long list of promises Harge wanted her to make. 
Carol tells Therese that they're selling the house and that she has a job and an apartment in the city, big enough for two. She tells Therese that she loves her and asks her to move in with her, but Therese says no. In the movie, Therese gets a message from Carol asking her to meet. When they meet, Carol tells her about the apartment and the job. She asks Therese to live with her and Therese says no. Carol then tells her that she loves her and they're interrupted. Therese goes to a party at Phil and Danny's apartment. She sees Richard with someone else and there's a minute where it looks like there might be something with the woman at the party, but she leaves and ends up going back to Carol. In the book, Therese leaves Carol to go to a cocktail party where the guy who might give her a job will be. The party is for the lead actress of the play. Therese does end up getting the job and she also gets the attention of the actress too. The actress invites her up to her room, but Therese finally understands that she'll never feel about anyone the way she does about Carol. She leaves the party and goes to meet Carol. This was not a clear cut winner for me on whether the book was better than the movie or vice versa. The movie is beautifully shot and I love both Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, but I think there were certain aspects of each character that I didn't really like in the movie. In the book, there are parts where it seems like it stops mid-thought and then changes to something completely different. And this made it very difficult for me to get through the first half. But it does pick up towards the end and is much more compelling. So in the end, I liked the way the characters were in the book better. Well, I think that about wraps it up. That's my recap on The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith and the 2015 movie adaptation titled Carol. What book would you like to hear about next? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this recap, please click like and be sure to click subscribe to see my next video. Thanks for watching.